about power plant engineering. Namaste friends, according to report published in newspapers in May 2024, share of coal consumption in power plants was 49.2% in year 2023-24. In year 2020-21, it was more than 52%. This reduction in coal consumption to produce electricity was made possible due to use of renewable sources of energy such as solar energy. Though it is an appreciable indication that it will help to reduce air pollution, but fact remains that out of 442 gigawatts of electricity produced in India in year 2023-24, about 217 gigawatts was produced using coal. Of course, we do expect further reduction in our dependency on coal, but for the time being, we have to use it in huge quantity to fulfill our requirement of energy. Coal Handling As already mentioned, Coal Handling 2 has two components. These are out plant handling and in plant handling. Out plant handling. It involves procurement and transportation of coal. Coal procurement includes calling quotations, negotiating deal and getting coal at reasonable price. Second part involves transportation of coal from mines to power plant. Railways can provide its economical transportation through goods trains. Generally, power plants get their supply of coal through goods trains. Coal is required in huge quantity and on regular basis for which goods trains are best option. Alternatively, coal can be supplied by goods carrying vehicles. However, it is suitable when coal mines and power plants are located close to each other. Waterways can be used if available. For intercontinental transportation of coal, ships are used. Another mode of supplying coal is through pipelines for long distances. Through pipelines, coal is supplied in the form of slurry or in the form of logs or in the form of capsules. These logs or capsules are prepared by compressing coal. This mode of transportation is seldom used as it involves consumption of water in huge quantity. In plant handling. In plant handling involves unloading, storage in open space, movement of coal to plant and its covered storage. Unloading. Coal is transported through goods trains in power plant. Goods train has wagons that are connected to each other. Coal carrying capacity of wagon is measured as amount of coal it can carry per axle. A wagon can carry about 22.8 tons of coal per axle. Generally, wagons with four axles are used. Therefore, each wagon can carry around 91.2 tons of coal. Railways term goods train as rake. One rake of coal 
has 59 wagons therefore it is possible to transport around 5380 tons of coal in single rake a power plant may use about 10 rakes of coal to generate 1800 megawatts of electricity after knowing all these details it may be realized that unloading of coal requires efficient equipments from railway wagons coal can be unloaded by using bottom dump wagons and rotary dump wagons third option is side dumping for short haul and under special circumstances this option is used bottom dump wagons in these wagons bottom is opened and coal falls down due to gravity it is collected over a conveyor belt it is an endless belt that can move continuously it moves and coal falls down in a bin this makes conveyor belt ready to take up coal from next wagon train moves so that next wagon comes just above conveyor belt unloading occurs in the same way as coal falls on conveyor belt due to gravity rotary dump wagon here each wagon is first disconnected disconnected wagon is located into a rotary device rotary device is huge in size the wagon is clamped and then with the help of rotary mechanism it is turned upside down coal is collected on conveyor belt from where it is transferred to bin rotary mechanism consists of gears and heavy electrical motors after wagon is emptied it is rotated back and slides on rails next wagon replaces it and process is repeated the rotary device requires auxiliary equipments this makes it expensive and complicated the train is converted into smaller rakes so that these become manageable shunting locomotives and marshaling yard are required for a smooth movement of wagons side dumping here wagon is separated and brought on a platform it is lifted and rotated coal is made to fall on conveyor belt that is located on side of railway track from there it is transferred to bin the wagon is brought back to horizontal position it moves and another wagon replaces it as already mentioned this option is used for short haul and under special circumstances preparation of coal coal that arrives in plant is raw it is to be prepared for use in plant the preparation of coal includes reducing size of coal chunks sizing removal of iron pieces and drying if it is wet size of coal chunks is reduced in crushers sizing ensures that coal chunks are reduced to desirable size crushers employed to reduce the size of coal chunks can be of different types in thermal power plants roller crusher and impact crusher are commonly used roller crusher in roller crusher there are two rollers these can rotate about their axis these rotate in opposite direction referring to diagram roller on left hand side rotates on fixed shaft in clockwise direction roller on right hand side 
is mounted on shaft that can move towards left or right. This is done with the help of a spring as shown on right hand side. Through horizontal movement of shaft, gap between rollers can be increased or decreased. Coal chunks of bigger size are fed from top as may be noticed. These move through gap between two rollers and are crushed. Crushed pieces of coal move downwards and are collected in a suitable bin. Gap between two rollers determine size of crushed pieces of coal. Small gap produces crushed pieces of a small size and big gap produces pieces big in size. Huge force is required to crush coal chunks. Therefore, electric motors used to rotate the roller have to be of big size. Rollers are also required to be robust so that these are able to crush coal chunks. Impact Crusher Crushing of coal can be initial crushing of big chunks received from mines. These are converted into small pieces. This is termed as primary crushing. These are further crushed into smaller size. This is termed as secondary crushing. There can be third stage of crushing also to reduce size of coal chunks to desired level. An impact crusher does the same. Referring to diagram, coal chunks are fed from top. Rotor mounted on shaft has four blow bars at right angle to each other. Coal chunks move down and pass through passage between rotor and impact rack. As may be noticed, gap between impact rack and rotor wheel is maximum here. Gap determines the reduction in size of chunks. As gap is more here, chunks are reduced to intermediate size. These are made to pass through second impact rack and then through third impact rack as may be noticed. Reduction in size of chunks occurs thrice and finally these come out as crushed pieces of coal at the bottom of crusher. An adjusting rod is provided with each impact rack. Pushing or pulling of this rod causes inward or outward movement of rack about pinion. By operating adjusting rod, gap between impact rack and rotor can be reduced or increased. This helps in getting desired size of coal pieces. The remaining steps in preparation of coal are taken after crushing. Sizing ensures that crushed pieces of coal are of permissible size. To achieve it, these are made to pass through sieve. Bigger pieces of coal are separated. These are sent back to crusher. Next step in preparation is separating iron pieces. To achieve it, coal is made to pass through magnetic separator. Its magnetic force separates iron pieces from coal. Further, coal is dried if wet. This completes preparation of coal. Prepared coal is stored. It can be a dead storage or live storage. A definite quantity of coal is kept in dead storage. This coal is kept as reserved only to be used in case of some disruption in supply of coal due to unforeseen circumstances. Amount of coal to be kept in dead storage is decided on the basis of consumption of coal in power plant. Coal 
kept in live storage is used in plant open storage live and dead storage of coal are in open space therefore it is known as open storage when stored in open space it is required to be protected against weathering and spontaneous combustion weathering of coal when kept in open coal is exposed to atmospheric air or oxygen present in air long exposure can cause slow oxidation of coal this causes loss in calorific value of coal oxidation without burning is termed as weathering spontaneous combustion of coal oxidation if rapid causes spontaneous combustion of coal low quality coal and coal with higher sulfur content have greater tendency of spontaneous combustion naturally if coal burns on its own it is lost in open storage coal is stored in heaps and under water in heaps it is essential to provide concrete flooring under heap this prevents flow of air from bottom coal is stored in layers that are 15 to 30 cm thick these layers need to be compacted to prevent flow of air the layers placed one above another form pile the pile is 10 to 12 meters high pile should have gentle slope on sides it helps in taking away rain water storage under water coal is stored in heaps that are kept under water practically water ponds created to store cooling water are used to store coal under water keeping coal under water eliminates possibilities of slow oxidation and spontaneous combustion of coal transfer of coal this transfer of coal is from location of open storage to covered storage this covered storage is near boiler here coal is stored according to daily needs generally this transfer can be done using different means the choice depends upon specific requirement belt conveyor this mode of transfer is useful if distance to be covered is large an endless belt moves over pulleys referring to diagram that shows a conveyor belt meant for transporting coal it has two pulleys p at ends these pulleys are in the shape of drum as wide belt is running on them it is an endless belt as may be noticed coal from belt loader falls on right end of wide belt belt loader is a bucket used to transfer coal belt moves from right to left as indicated by arrow coal also moves with it naturally when it arrives at left end it falls down and is collected in bin carriers c as shown support belt number of carriers depend upon length of belt on lower side a supporting pulley s may be noticed there are three idler or idler pulleys i on lower side as shown these also support belt and make its movement smooth their number two depends upon length of belt it may also be mentioned here that carriers supporting pulley and idlers are of drum shape 
to accommodate wide belt. Conveyor belts are suitable for transporting coal for a distance of few hundred meters within a plant. Alternatively, buckets hanging from a rope can be used for such distances. It is an endless rope moving on pulleys. Buckets are filled at one end, moved to covered storage and are emptied there. Empty buckets move back as rope moves backwards on pulleys. Screw conveyor It is meant for movement of coal through short distance. It is a helicoid screw mounted on shaft. Referring to diagram that shows helicoid screw mounted on shaft. This shaft can rotate about its axis. Coal from loader is fed from entrance shown on right hand side. As a screw rotates, coal that lies there starts moving along the axis towards left. It is taken out from exit on left hand side. The movement of coal from right to left hand side is indicated by arrow on upper side. A pulley mounted on shaft has been shown on left hand side. It is rotated with the help of belt as may be noticed. This causes rotation of helicoid screw. An electric motor on other side of belt provides rotary motion to pulley. Helicoid screw is required to rotate at a slow speed for a smooth horizontal movement of coal. Bucket elevator As the name indicates, it can transport coal in vertically upward direction. Again, it is meant to elevate coal through small height. Referring to diagram, buckets are mounted on endless chain. This chain is mounted on two sprockets as may be noticed. One of the sprocket rotates with the help of an electric motor. Chain moves about sprockets as indicated by vertical arrows. An entrance is provided on lower right hand side. Coal from loader is fed into it. This causes filling of buckets one by one as these move upwards. As buckets start moving downwards on other side, these are emptied. Coal is collected suitably and is taken out from exit on upper left hand side. Emptied buckets are filled again as these move upwards on opposite side. As already mentioned, it can move coal through small height. Furnace bin mentioned in diagrams is part of covered storage. Apart from these machines, there are cranes, loaders and small trucks for movement of coal within plant. Cranes use buckets and are movable. Loaders are bins that can be moved manually. Small trucks are used for the movement of coal through small distance. In some coming lectures, I would be talking about ash handling in power plants. Many machines that have been described here are used for ash handling also. I would be talking about them when time comes. By this time, you should have realized that coal is procured and transported to plant through out plant handling. It was unloaded, prepared and stored in open space within plant. Further, it has moved to covered storage. That's all for present lecture. Thanks for watching.